This is the story so many of us just can't get enough of. A man saving a baby crawling next to a busy highway in northeast Georgia. Now, the baby's okay, and the man they're calling a hero is right here with us today. We're so grateful. We're going to continue the conversation with Bryant Collins, who you see there. First, though, baby Emily's parents explained to WXIA's Paul Crowley uh, how their baby was able to get out of their house. He's our angel, and, you know, we're thankful to him from the bottom of our hearts. That's how Denise and Timothy Pickens feel about the man who probably saved the life of their 15-month-old daughter, Emily. And I just jumped off, and it was a baby. They're grateful to Bryant Collins for finding her wandering along the edge of a busy Madison County highway last Friday, a few hundred yards from their home. But that's just one reason they called 11 Alive. They also want to clear their names after Timothy was charged with neglect, and Denise may soon be as well. We did not neglect our children. We was there with them the whole time. We just stepped outside for a few uh, for a few minutes. The Pickens say they were in the backyard bagging aluminum cans while Emily was napping. The 12 year old brother James was supposed to be watching her. When they found out she was missing, they panicked, searched frantically for her, and called 911, only to hear she'd been found nearby. Timothy admits he pushed a deputy who would not let him be reunited with his daughter. My kids are my world, and I couldn't find her, and all I wanted to do was to hold her, to make sure, you know, make sure she was safe, and they wouldn't let me do that, and I just went, at, went toward her. Timothy admits he got out of line, but he and his wife do not believe they should face charges of neglect. She's with us 24 hours a day. She's never run off before, and, uh, but we, we do watch her. In Madison County, Paul Crawley, 11 Live News. Okay, so Bryant, one of the things that, um, that you brought up, um, I want to play some sound that, that you gave to a local TV affiliate in terms of your background. Let's listen to this real quickly. I did 10 years in the federal institution for um, manufacturing cocaine. And while I was in prison, I decided I, I can't come home like I came to prison. It made me feel good that I could, you know, be in society and, and do good. Just as well as you could do bad, you could do good, you know. I love that. Now, I want to tell you, a lot of people on Twitter are saying the fact that you're an ex-con should not be, you know, it's not important. They're tweeting things like, his name is Bryant, not ex-con. He can't just be a person. And somebody said, so that's all you view him as. I I'm wondering, what? made you think, you know, I want to share this part of, of myself with me, with all of you. I mean, I um, spoke with some of my relatives last night, and they include my brother. He didn't kind of like it, but I told him, you know, it is what it is. Whether you like it or not, you know, I've been to prison. I'm an ex. The key word is ex, you know. I think what, this is what's fascinating to me, is we know, statistics show us that people who go to prison, the majority of them either come out and they end up going back in, to prison at some point, or they come out in, in much worse conditions than they went in. For people who are, are in that situation or who f have family members in that situation and they want better for themselves, what did you do in prison that changed you? Well, what I did in prison, I, first of all, I began to take God serious. I never took anybody serious but me, you know, and my people and things. But I began to take God serious and I realized that, okay, Prison is a community within itself. So if I can change in prison, then I can change on the street. But there's no way I was going to believe if I keep doing what I was doing in prison that I can go home with, you know, prison got thousand people. Mm -hmm. Georgia got millions of people. I mean, if I can't change with a thousand people, I know I wasn't going to change with a million. And I just used that time I was in prison to better myself. I surrounded myself with people that wanted the same thing that I wanted, and we worked together with each other. You know, I got a list of people that helped me to get to where I am, you know, and, and that's what helped me. I would, I would think that would be one of the most daunting tasks, because if you're in prison, you're with a lot of people who might not be receptive to that thought process of, you know, finding God and doing better. Was it hard to find those people? No. No. Easy. It's a lot of people want to do good, you know. And I think the problem with what happens, you know, and, um, and, and not to take away from the subject, I talk, the government blessed me with opportunity to teach psychology classes when I was in prison. So I would sit down and one-on-one -on -one with dudes that have been real tough guys in society. And, you know, they just basically say what I say. I just you know, needed to be around some people that wanted what I wanted and I could talk to. And they wouldn't make it a big issue out of, 
you know, wouldn't go back and tell my business to other people, stuff like that. And eventually, you know, my classes that I had, I had so many people signing up to get in the class because they wanted somebody to talk to them that, you know, that was real. And I, and I always tell them, like I told the people, a great help with me, my people never turned their back on me. Mm -hmm. Even when I was doing what I was doing, they never turned their back on me. So what about your family? When you, so you do all of this while you're in prison. That transition back to, you know, civilian life, I guess I would say, or a, a free life. How did your family take it? How did your friends? Did you go back to the same circles or? No, no. Well, well it, friends, I mean, a friend is going to want what you want. A friend is going to want what's best for you. Now, if, I had people that I dealt with in my, you know, before I went to prison. And they respected me, you know. Yeah. They didn't try to force anything on me because they know, you know, I wasn't going to go for that anyway. But they respected me and they, they congratulated me. But my family, oh, my family did whatever they had to do. I was in Kentucky. My family would go find my kids and bring them all the way to Kentucky to see me like once a month, you know, at their expense. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't like, you know, I was providing money for them. They would do that and they would take care of my kids on their birthdays, school, you know, holidays. Yeah. So, I mean, family is one of the most important things that could help you transition from being in prison. And also, I want to thank the people that gave me jobs, you know, yeah. with my background. You know, I, I mean, the company that I work for now, you know, I would tell any person that they will give you an opportunity. You mm -hmm. know, the company I work for, they will give you an opportunity, even if you've got a bad history. But, you know, I, I went in the door working. You know, mm -hmm. I knew I had to work. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, once I decided to change my life, I worked seven days a week for 10 years, two jobs. Well, Brian, it has been such a pleasure to have you, you here, to hear your story. And uh, I think you're making, you're making a lot of difference for a lot of people. You are inspiring an awful lot of people with this story. So we are wishing you the very best. Thank you. With everything. Thank you. Thank you.